baby was born with a title that he wanted. Oh, yes. So, my first point is that maybe one of the challenges we have with the Star Wars is so many of us are preoccupied with power. Herod was addicted to power. Power is an intoxicating elixir. Some of us have drank of this cup and just can't get enough. I know you've worked with some people who just got a taste. And they're acting like they already arrived. <laughs> am, I, am I preaching right in here? Yes. There are some people who, who just move one level higher than you. And you can't talk to them. That, that they are on a level that you, you can't even bow down and, and courtesy them when they come in because they, they are too high to be in your presence. But, but, but Herod got drunk with power. Because he got drunk in power, he was busy trying to control things that helped him move towards his quote-unquote destiny. He was the epitome as one writer said, brutality. Amen. Herod removed everybody that he perceived was his competition. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can go over this. Over the years, Herod killed many people. He killed his brother-in-law. He killed his mother-in-law. He killed his two sons. And by the way, he even killed his wife. All because power. Seemingly, they were, in his mind, conspiring to take over his power. Can I tell you that, that there are some people that might not have killed anybody physically, uh huh, but you've used your tongue to assassinate some people. I know it won't be right in here for a bit. That, that we've gone on the telephone and we've taken out some people just because they look like, oh God, they look like they can threaten us. They look like they're on the way up. But maybe you have, might not have been the assassinator, but you have been trying to assassinate you. I got good news from heaven. No weapon that is formed against you shall be able to prosper. Because you see, the power they're looking for is in the power in the external, but you have a power that's inside of you. And maybe I could use a Star Wars term, and you wouldn't understand what this means, but the force is with you. That, that Luke Skywalker, that whatever comes up against you, you've got something in, can I preach to you afternoon? That, that when you're in the Star Wars of life, realize that your power does not come from a title, your power does not come from a position, but who is with you? He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And that's encouragement enough for sometimes I feel like giving up. But when God looks down in the midst of my situation, he gets power to the weak. Sometimes I don't feel like getting up. Sometimes I don't feel like going far. But there's something on me. But your neighbor say this is the real power. Sickness in your body. You still got a smile on your face. Can I preach to you? You don't have a dime in your wallet, but there's something inside of you that tells you everything is going to be just all right. Something about the power that helps you to keep on walking, to keep on talking. But no, they talk about you. Or don't they conspire against you? But you keep on going to work. Or don't they plot against you? Or don't they want to squeeze you out? Or don't they want to hire their friend and they want to hire their cousin? But what God has for you is for you. You see, he was trying to be Herod the Great. He wanted to be one of the most cruel leaders of his time. That he didn't mind murdering you so that he could keep power. And some of us have become callous in that we'll take lives just to get things. 
Isn't that where we are? That our young people are killing each other for power. They're beating up each other because you diss me. You disrespect me. You embarrass me. Can I give you more scripture? The Bible says pride going before the fall. Sometimes you can think of yourself more highly than you should. I'm not saying that you should be so low that you allow people to trouble on you, but humility should be the watchword. That, that, that you should be so confident in the God that is inside of you that no matter what they say about you, uh, no matter how they talk about you, no matter how they lie on you, you know who you are, you know whose you are, you know you are a child of the king. There was a time when things used to bother me, but now I've gotten to the point, talk all you want. It's just a sign that something is going on on the inside. You can lie on me all you want. The truth might be slow, but it can catch up after a while. I, I've learned how to be content at whatever state I'm in. I, I wonder if God never did anything else for you. Could you give him a praise today? If God never opened a door again, if he never gave you more house and another car and more clothes, but has he done enough to give? So, 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 so maybe, maybe the challenge of Herod, my second point is that he might have been preoccupied with possessions. Oh, Lord, Pastor. Herod wanted it all. I want to be rich. People wake up every day. Come to church for me to tell them that it's been around seven times. <laughs> so the biggest offering you ever saw, and you will be rich. I've got the phone number, y'all. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things you're trying to get shall be. Isn't that simple? You ain't got to bring me no special offering. You ain't got to get in a special prayer line. All you have to do is seek the star. Turn your star down low and look for the Christ that still shines in Bethlehem. Can I, can I tell you some of the possessions that, that had our Herod today? Is it Herod? was maybe a modern day Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know that's dangerous to call that name. He had built seven palatial palaces. That he built a palace for wherever part of town he slept. Gotta remember now, he only got a region but as big as Nassau. Mm -hmm. But he had seven palaces. That wherever he decided to lay his head, he would sleep in a palace that night. He, he created seven theaters that people would come and watch competitions. And, and most of them could hold between five to 9,000 people. But the biggest one he created held 300,000 people could come and watch him, watch gladiators kill each other. Oh, Bahamas, we've gotten to a place where we think killing is entertainment. We've gotten to a place that we have turned our phones into the theater of gladiators. That the most you see on these Facebook uploads, these videos, these Snapchat, these WhatsApp are fights. Am I right about it? Children fighting, bus drivers fighting, everybody fighting. We want to upload it, but can I tell you, we've got to be careful of that, that we've been drawn into this violent circle, believing that the only way we can answer our problems is with a fight. I'm going to leave that alone, but, but you know, I was talking to this karate teacher, and, and I said to him, I said, so you're teaching these children to fight? He said, preacher, I want to correct you. He said, I'm not teaching them to fight. 
I thought he was trying to be overly smart with me. So I said to him, okay, they kick him, they punch him. Last time I said, you put him in there to spa, they kick him and punch him each other. But he said to them, I am teaching them self-defense. So I'm teaching them that when the attack comes, how to defend yourself against the attack. I said, that's good. So, so, so he, he's saying, I find that after I've taught them how to defend themselves, they don't fight as much. Watch this now, because they know what they can do. Oh God, I better preach to this side, because that side can get what I'm saying. He, he said, after I've given them the skills and the capability, and I've teaching them how to block and punch, I find out that they don't go looking for fights. They, they know how to defend themselves if a fight comes, because they know that they have the capability, they have the resources that they can hurt somebody real bad. And, and, and it, it kind of reminded me of Christianity, that when you know that God has his hand on you, I didn't understand this turn the other cheek thing, but when you know like you know that God's power is inside of you, you don't answer everybody because you know you got too much to lose. I wish I could preach to you that, that you can look at yourself and realize that God has given you the power because back in the day you would have been tit for tat, brother for fat, that if you can bring it, I can bring it, that whatever you think you can bring, I can bring something stronger. But when God gets a hold of you, you find the humbleness to turn away because you said, baby, if I ever go back to what I used to be, it wouldn't be pretty, but just so I can save you, a good cut it. I gotta walk away. I better leave this situation alone. And some of us can really testify that we saved. Some of us can really shout today because we used to go to the end. We used to but now you can really testify that God has given you enough tools that you can pray for them. Oh God, that despite for the users that are told they're taking advantage of you, you can still keep God finds in a bad situation. Somebody needs to realize that's real power. Real power is that when God takes you from nothing, it makes you something. And you still turn around and say to all Glory be to God. There may be another point I see why, why Herod was on the dark side. I wanted something psychologically to analyze Herod. Uh, I wanted to know a psychological term that I could really apply to Herod. And so uh, my wife is studying psychology and I said, what, what would be the term? And, and, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right. She, she said he, he had paranoia. He was preoccupied with paranoia. Now, can see if, see if anybody in here got Herod's disease. I won't be long something like this or that. Like that. When you walk in, they start talking. See, they talking about me. You, you, you see, paranoid. When you come in, they go out. See, every time I come in, ain't nobody won't be in the cafeteria with me. But sometimes we could get so paranoid that people ain't studying us. And we didn't conspire in our mind. Someone say amen anyway. You're looking at the kind of heart. You, 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 don't, you don't conspire in the chambers of your mind that people are talking and they are secretly planning. And can I tell you, I realized a long time ago that if you give them free rent in your mind, they'll stay there all the time. I don't have time to worry about people, what they say and what they're doing. I've got my 
mind stayed on Jesus and because my mind is on Jesus, it might be true, but it's all right because it don't bother me. I don't mind if you're coming, if you're going, if you talk to me or don't talk to me. I got one that walks with me. I got one that talks with me. I got one that is there by my side 24-7. He's sticking closer than a brother. So if, if you see me talking to myself, I really am not.